Hey guys, it's Ashley, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite series of all time. The last time that I made this video was in 2018, I think it was? Wait, let me double check that. Yeah, the last time that I made this video was two years ago, but that would be 2019, but I think because it's the beginning of 2021, it was really 2018. I'm pretty sure it was 2018, just go with me on this one. But that's two, almost three whole years of reading new books, new series, you know, editing this list, adding more, taking some off, and I thought that it was about time that I updated this and shared it with you guys. If you're a returning subscriber or have been watching my videos for a while, first of all, thank you, and second of all, you will see some familiar faces slash covers on this list. Some of these have not changed since I started my channel. They're just near and dear to my heart and I will cherish them forever. Uh, but some of these are new within the past like year, even the past like month. So yeah, I'm excited to share them. And without further ado, let's just get started. So first up, I want to start with like an OG a Dash of Ash book because I feel like I have been talking about this series since the beginning of time. No, since like 2017, I think is when I first read it. The series that I'm talking about is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. You knew, you knew what I was gonna say. A Darker Shade of Magic is just one of those fantasy trilogies that I read early on when I started booktube and it henceforth and forevermore became a favorite. This series got me really, really interested in V.E. Schwab. She's now obviously one of my favorite authors of all time. She makes incredible work and is just continuing to outdo herself every single year she publishes something new and I'm just completely astounded every single time I pick up a book of hers. The Darker Shade of Magic is a high fantasy adult series, though technically to me it kind of borderlines adult and young adult or new adult, I guess I would say. It's a series that I would recommend to people who are either just getting into high fantasy or want to sort of branch into more adult fantasy and don't really know where to start, this is a great like beginner series to be honest with you. It's very easy to get into, very easy to understand, and the characters in the world you're just gonna love. They're great. If you don't know anything about this series, essentially this world is like a multiverse of London, let's say. So you've got Red London, White London, Black London, Grey London, and they're all different versions of each other. So we follow Kel, who is an Antari, which means he has the ability to use all the different types of magic that exist in this world. He also has the ability to travel between the Londons. He's also, <laughs> add on to that, the adopted son of King and Queen Queen Maresh, who reside in Red London. Then we also follow Lila Bard, who is a street urchin, pickpocket, thief, and she ends up getting her hands on something that belongs to Kel and could essentially possibly end the world. So they have to work together to figure out how to get it back to where it belongs to prevent that from happening. I've read this whole series two times now, still have not made a book talk review for Conjuring of Light, so I am really sorry because I definitely remember promising you guys that I would and I just never did, so... That's on me. <laughs> but I don't think that I'm ever gonna stop loving this series, mostly because it's what got me into V.E. Schwab, Victoria Schwab's work, and it's just such a good series. I love these characters, I love this world. It's so, like, unique, and I'm just obsessed with it. So, yeah, definitely gonna be the first that I mention because of all of that. So the next series on my all-time favorites list is The Heroes of Olympus by Rick Riordan. I couldn't make this video without calling out a Percy Jackson Rick Riordan series. You all know who I am, I just can't do that to myself. So I'm picking The Heroes of Olympus because it is actually my favorite of Rick Riordan's series. I've mentioned this before, but if you didn't know, that's the answer. I feel like Rick Riordan's work is just such a staple on my channel and I would not be doing myself justice if I did not mention anything by him or in the Percy world. I'm not gonna really say much about these books, obviously. A lot of people know about Percy Jackson. I'm I'd be surprised if you had never heard of it before. They're a childhood favorite of mine and they have carried over into my adult years and I don't think I will ever stop loving them or at least appreciating what they have done for me as a reader. So yeah. Next up we're gonna dive into a relatively new series that I discovered last year, though I had heard about it a lot more in the past few years, but I finally read it for the first time last year and absolutely became obsessed and addicted with it. And that series is the Scythe series by Neil Shusterman. After all of that screaming about this series that I did last year, you can't honestly believe that I would leave it off of this list. This is actually the second book called Thunderhead. The first book, Scythe, I just don't have, it's a physical copy, so I'm just gonna hold this one up. But Scythe is such a good series. It's, 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 I don't have words. <laughs> it's set in this really weird futuristic world of ours that's sort of supposed to be utopian, but in reality is kind of dystopian. 
where we have conquered death, we have become immortal, and because of that, our population is going crazy and we need to stop. So we have established the Scythedom, which are people who are delegated to choose people to kill. In the story, we follow Citra and Rowan, who are two teens who end up becoming scythe apprentices, meaning they're going to train to become scythes and in the end will get their rings and be able to glean people and stuff like that. And through their training and through all of the ups and downs and crazy shit that happens in this story, you find out that this utopian society that we have created is anything but that. And it is crazy and running rampant with corruption and it's so good. I already want to reread this series and I just finished it last year, so that says anything. So the next book on this list is another tried and true favorite series of mine that I've been talking about since I read it years ago, and that series is The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I actually haven't talked about this series in quite a while, so this honestly might come as a surprise to some of you who have been watching me recently and know that I have not talked about this at all in the slightest, but as I was making this list I looked down at the series and I'm like, you know what, this is just such a unique interesting series that came to me at a time on booktube where I just really wanted to get absolutely sucked in and addicted to a series and this was that series that I like can't take it off of this list because of that. If you don't know anything about the Illuminae Files, it is a sci-fi trilogy following two different characters in every book and it's about crazy stuff, crazy, crazy stuff that happens. The books are all told in sort of a multimedia format where you've got correspondences through email, you've got like data entry logs and uh, medical records and stuff like that that kind of tell a story as to what happened. And in the first story you follow Katie and Ezra who have just broken up, they, they just ended their relationship and then right afterward their planet gets invaded. So. They have to hightail it to spaceships so that they can flee and get away, and yeah, it's a it's a crazy, crazy time. There's also this AI called Aiden who just pulls at your heartstrings even though he technically isn't really human, and it's like, uh, it's so good. I've been wanting to reread this series for a while and I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but like I said, it's just one of those really unique series to me that will always stand out amongst other books. And for that reason, I had to keep it on this list. So this next series that I wanna talk about is one that I know is super popular on my channel. The videos that I made for this series have just really exploded over the years and people always come and tell me that my you know videos about these books were some of their favorites and it always surprises me because I never thought that this series was like a really big favorite of mine and it was just really odd to me that so many people like associated it with my videos. But then I went back and I, I looked not at the videos but at my history with this series and realized that I've read this series like nearly four times and half of that I don't even think I told anybody that I reread this series when I did because I just I don't know, sometimes I just really want to go back and like relive what happens in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and like say the series and then try to explain it the best I can. I can't even believe I'm putting this on this list. The series that I'm talking about is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. I'm saying all of this to you now as if I'm not currently in the middle of rereading A Court of Wings and Ruin <laughs> for the third fourth time! Oh my god, what is happening to me? I think when it comes to series and books that I've reread, this series takes the trophy for most times I've reread a book. When it comes to fantasy, the best, most, like, you know, sweeping, all-encompassing romance that I can think of is A Court of Mist and Fury. And it's weird because I always just associate these books with like fairy sex, which if you haven't read these books before, that's gonna sound really weird and out of context, but just roll with it, okay? The relationship and the love story that happens in the second book is one of my favorites that I've ever read, and I think I've reread it to just the second book like four times because I love it so much, and I'm never gonna stop liking it until I read something that, you know, overcomes it, I guess. Yeah, the first book can choke, and the third book can can also choke, but like the middle to like the end, like like the end of the third book can choke. And A Court of Frost and Starlight can choke, but A Court of Mist and Fury and the first half of A Court of Wings and Ruin are like the best things that I've read. And I'm gonna keep rereading them. If you are also a big fan of this series, you know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
So this next series will also come as no surprise to you, and that is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. So again, this is another series I've talked about so many times on my channel, and I've gotten some of you to read it, and you say that you love it, and I'm happy that you love it, and I hope you're happy that you love it too. This is just one of those middle grade series that continues to get better and better and better over time. It's amazing. Nevermore is about a girl named Morgan Crow who is a cursed child because she was born on the unluckiest day of the year, and so on the day that she is supposed to die, because cursed children don't live past the age of 11, 12. She gets a visit from a man named Jupiter North who whisks her off to the wondrous world of Nevermore where she has to compete in a competition to become a member of the wondrous society and be able to stay in this wacky, crazy, upside down world. Like I said, the books just get better and better and better. In the second book, we get introduced to this magic school that Morgan gets to go to. And in the third book, we get introduced to this whole new plot that's going to take place in the fourth, fifth, and sixth books. I'm so excited. It's an ongoing really long series and I'm here for it and I just like everything that has happened in this series just makes me so excited for what's to come so I have to have to keep this on this list it's so good it just the series makes me so happy and I'm just so happy that I I read it when I did I love it so much I feel like I'm just like rambling when it comes to these books but I just they're my favorites I, I got nothing else to say. So the next series on my all-time favorites list is a relatively new addition, and that is the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. If you haven't heard me talk about this series in the past few months, where have you been? This is another high fantasy that to me borderlines YA and adult. I would personally consider this a bit more YA, but I know some people consider this adult, so it just depends, I guess, on what you feel. The story follows a girl named Vin, who is a street urchin. She works with a thieving crew, and she's got this magic that she doesn't quite understand how to use or where it came from. One day she meets this guy named Kelsier who sort of enlists her onto his team to try to overthrow the government. And so this whole first book is them trying to, I guess, perform this like, you know, rebellion, this revolution, and you know, down with the Lord Ruler and stuff like that. The series gets better as it goes along as more of this like really mysterious, spooky almost sort of world that you don't know much about becomes more and more clear to you by the third book. Um, there's so much that happens in here between all of the different like magic systems. Ah, just so many different things that make this series so good. And the atmosphere in this book, it's just like dark and mysterious and you want to know more but also you're so scared of what's gonna happen and it's so great. Other things that I liked about this series, number one, the romance that I was not expecting and it happened and it was amazing. Number two, the politics. I'm not a big reader of politics. I don't really like enjoy reading politics in books. Politics sometimes bore me, right? And in this book, especially in the second one where the politics and the sort of building up of this new world and government were taking place, I was really intrigued and really enjoyed it and I think that's one of the main reasons that I liked book two the most. And number three, I love the almost sort of found family that you get with Vin when she meets all of these people and starts, you know, trusting them, trusting herself, you know, growing up. She's just such a great character and I love her so much and I just love this series. I do. It deserves a place on this list. Next up we have The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell which is still on this list despite the fact that I really need to reread this series because because I don't remember a lot of the details of what happened in this, but I just remember flying through this series and then talking about it nonstop on my channel. So it's such a good series. It's so good. I still recommend it all the time and I'm so excited for book three. The Last Magician is kind of like a historical fiction meets fantasy meets time travel book. It's great. In this world you've got like people who have powers and it's also a heist book. So there's so many things going on that make this book so good. You follow this girl named Esta who is a thief but she has the ability to stop time. But because of something that happens in the book blah 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 they end up being able to travel through time. So she goes back in time to 1902 New York to steal something. Well, to get on this team that then performs this heist to steal something that will help them in the future. There's also this like magician named Hart Derrigan who is like plays a really fun role and there's like a romance that happens and it's ugh, it's everything. It's so good. I really really want to reread the series before book three comes out or at least before I get to book three. So definitely high on my TBR to reread and I just still, I still love this series. I do because there's not a whole lot of books that I've read that are historical fiction fantasy. Like yes there are fantasy that have taken influence from different 
like nations and different time periods and stuff like that but this one is truly just like an urban fantasy set in 1902 or at least mostly set in 1902 and it's great and I love it. So the final series that I have on this list is a brand new one that I recently just finished like literally a week ago and I'm obsessed with it. I loved it so much. It was amazing. It was great. It was everything that I wanted. You might already know what it is but it is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. If you like really rich fantasies with characters who you will love and then hate and then once you cry over definitely pick this up. It's so good. I've talked about this book like pretty non-stop in the past couple of videos that I've made on my channel so I apologize if this is like you know you're hearing it again for like the sixth time but I can't help it this series is so good and I just finished the third book The Empire of Gold and it was incredible I was so afraid of what was going to happen by the end of it because it's a nearly 800 page book so I feel like literally anything can happen and also after the way that the Kingdom of Copper which is book two ended I just had no idea where this book was gonna go. No idea where the series was gonna go. And it was so, so good. There were characters who I did not like in the beginning of the series, who I ended up falling head over heels for by the end. There were characters at the beginning of the series that I fell head over heels for. And by the end, I wanted to just like sob and cry and like, you know, everything. And like, I just, ugh, so many feelings so many feelings. I'll try to keep my description of this series brief because I've said this so many times already on my channel like I said, but The City of Brass is a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy following two characters, Nari and Ali. So Nari is a street thief living in Cairo. She's got no family, no friends really. Um, she's got these like healing powers. She doesn't know where it came from and one day she accidentally summons this ancient warrior named Dara who comes from uh, this world that she didn't even know existed and he whisks her away and takes her to this place where she thinks that she will find her you know the place that she belongs if that makes sense and then the other character is Ali who is the prince of Devabad which is the place that Dara is going to take Nari and then their stories are going to collide he's the prince he has very like strong morals he really wants to try to help the Shafit uh, who are the people who are kind of like oppressed in this world but uh, to do so would come at the cost of his family so he's like always struggling between like what's right and you know supporting his family and things like that and it's just a crazy wild ride. In books two and three you also get Dara's perspective and it just like adds so much more to the story and it's it's a crazy crazy wild ride like I said. So I definitely really am glad that I read this series I love it so much and it's definitely a favorite. And so you guys, those are all of my all-time favorite series currently as of February 2021. That's when I'm filming this. I don't remember which series I had put on my 2018 list of all-time favorites, but I'm pretty sure some of these made an appearance there as well as here, which is not surprising, you know? When they're a favorite, they're a favorite and you love them till the end, but this list is ever-changing and my tastes are ever-changing and as I read more books, some older ones fall away and it happens. You learn and you grow and you mature and you find what you like and you make a list and you share it with everybody on your YouTube channel. <laughs> um, if you have a favorite series of all time, definitely let me know in the comments. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this really long video. So if you want to follow me on any of my socials, all my handles are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye!